when I got into Elu, it was shockingly brilliant experience because it was a fully Finnish organization. From the beginning, I was working for the need of immigrants because I was seeing that there are so much of discouragement, so much of the stereotypes that are being shared. How did you manage to <laughs> your work life balance? Probably it was I not could see even from there. Your eyes. That was a lack of a sleep. That was okay. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome to a, another episode of Talent Boost Podcast. I'm Diliara, nice to meet you again. And today I want to present you our guest straight from Kopio. He is a student of Savonia University of Applied Sciences and he also works as a producer and had a lot of projects uh, done with Talent Boost as well. And I want to present our guest now, Roham. Nice to meet you. Hi, thank you for having me here. It's a, it's a pleasure. And, and as you said, I came from Kopio, from Savonia University. And at the moment, I'm working as a producer and host. Um, so, pleased to be here. And I would be very, very glad if I could help and share some of the um, insights from the journey that I had. Yeah, I'm also excited that you were able to join us today. And I hope you had a nice ride today uh, to I, US. I it was, it was nice. It was quite a relaxed journey on yeah. the train. It's a good weather now, finally. Yes, finally. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I would love to ask first, how did you manage to come to Finland? When did you arrive to Finland? And what was the main purpose probably to come here? Well, um, obviously it was, of course, under the purpose of being a student here. I moved here two years and a half, two and a half years ago in 2020. And I started at Savonia in the, in the major of business administration to, to study business administration. Um, so, so that was the purpose that I came here uh, in the first place. But then um, it, was, it was not that much of easy moving because I had no friends, no relatives. I did technically know, I didn't know anyone here in Finland. And then I moved to Kopio which is the ninth biggest city of Finland. And uh, like technically, if I, if I would be in Helsinki or other cities, there would be more international, um, um, you know, like environment. Mm -hmm. But then I went to a place that it was mostly Finnish environment. So that's, that was how I moved and, and why I came and the very first um, experience that I had, everything. And I, and I arrived in November, which the days are mostly dark yeah so i was completely lost in the beginning but then i had to find a way but like i will i will let you to ask me the questions mm -hmm. and then i will go through the through, through the rest of the journey so basically can you also mention mm -hmm. what you studied in what do you study in university yeah, yeah. and business administration yeah, yeah. yeah. Business, uh, uh, and you travel here alone in the no, beginning. no, no, no. With my, I have, I had when okay. I came here. I I came here with my wife, and then my daughter was one year and a half back then. Yeah. Was was it more difficult for you than to come more like responsibility. with your family? Yeah. You know, when I came here, I was twenty four years old. Mm -hmm. So having already uh, two people with you, it's more responsibility. And then the the main challenge is that I must find the work to put the food on the table for the family as well. I'm a student too, so um, in the bachelor degree, which you have to attend the school on daily basis, mm -hmm. so it was quite more challenging in the beginning. Yeah, I, I can imagine, like, uh, 24 is such a young age and, like, moving to completely another mm. country with another culture yeah, that and, is so and, different. And I'm Persian, I come from Iran, mm -hmm. so so even the weather is quite different. The culture is quite different. And here I am in the north of Europe. Mm -hmm. So um, it was quite a big step that I took in for, for my for my life, let's say. And how long did it take for you to be in that period where you felt lost and didn't know what to do? Well, um, before I come here, um, I knew that I'm, I'm not going there to just find out about okay who, who I'm, like you know what I'm gonna do or this and that I already um, 
straightforward knew what I wanted. Uh, it was always a dream for me to be an entrepreneur mm-hmm. and to have my own business one day. So I came to Finland to study. Therefore, I could have a business myself after my studies are over. Um, so that was a purpose in the beginning. But then I also knew that I have to um, get a job because otherwise I cannot survive uh, if I don't work. But like what bothered me in the beginning was the other international people who were giving comments. Mm-hmm. So you know that I already came with so much of a stress, so much of responsibility with the yeah. family and with the hope of finding a job. And then there would be those people who would come to me and say, hey, uh, if you don't know Finnish, don't even look for any kind of job because it's somehow impossible to get it. Um, I'm here for four years and I couldn't and this and that and I would hear it from every corner. So it was quite frustrating. So then, you know, like, they, they, this is this is more of discouragement than, than awareness. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I had no other choice because, you know, if I were single, I could say, okay, I will, like, you know, I will accept it as a as an assumption and I will try. And then if I don't find, then it will be a fact for me. But I had no other choice. So then I the only option for me was to close my ears. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, I will learn the language. Ha. <laughs> Little did I know, it was quite hard to learn the language. So um, um, I said, okay, there must be another way to land a job. Um, of course, I, I tried some blue collar jobs. For the first year, I worked as a cleaner. Mm-hmm. Um, before I come here, I was an IELTS instructor and an English teacher in Iran. But then, then I moved here, I worked as a cleaner for the first 10 months. It was, it, th- there is no shame, you know, like in, in yeah. moving from that character because It's, it's as long as it's a work, it's respectable, but it was not my desired career to take. Mm-hmm. Therefore, I couldn't be happy. And and I thought that, okay, I have to learn the culture if I cannot learn the language. There are so much of a stereotypes, so much of a stereotypes and generalize what things look like. But when I got into, uh, into learning the culture, I found out that even region by region, It would be a um, different culture, especially I live in, in North Savo. So Savo culture is also one of the ones that are, are unique, let's say. And and there is, for example, this culture that everything is a maybe, mm-hmm. you know, like it's, it's never a yes or no. Uh, of course, it's again a stereotype and generalized, but like most cases, um, that goes that way. But like working culture. So what do you think that if you want to learn the culture and now I'm working as a part time cleaner? and a full-time student, and a full-time parent, what option did I have to learn the culture? Yeah, I just want to comment quickly that, like, starting from the cleaner, it's not, as you said, something, like, shameful or, or anything like that. And I think that it's even more unique that um, you started, like, from these little bottom, steps yeah. from the bottom, and then you made everything step by step. And on throughout this journey you probably gained a lot of knowledge not just about culture language but you also met new people made a huge network Mm -hmm. and you kind of started understanding through this experience Mm -hmm. how working culture works in finland actually actually, through that cleaning job i couldn't get the working culture that much because i was i was studying up until 4 p.m from 7 a.m to 4 p.m and then 4 p.m i had to go to um, um restaurants or schools that it was already closed mm-hmm. and then clean those places so I, i thought that okay i must get to talk with people get to know people and things especially um so i applied for different internships that were for you know they would give university credit so they were unpaid and then i le- uh, ended up in north savo talent hub um so there was this teacher that uh, always was a like a mentor to me, Virpi Oksanen. And in, in one of her lectures, she said a very interesting uh, thing when she was teaching. It was one course related to business. She said, when I was when I was a teenager, let's say, or when I was younger, before I have a kid, um, whenever I would go to Prisma, I would never see the, the part that they have things for babies. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the diaper and everything for the babies. Yeah. As soon as I became a mother, then I could see that, okay, there is also one one place for kids as well. You know, you, you would never go if you don't have a kid. Mm-hmm. She was trying to teach us the need in in people so that you have to take care of what is the need of people. And then when I joined that internship, I just looked at 
what is the need that this project exists. So then I try to give all myself for that need instead of just getting some task done to get the university credit. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, I was working with so much passion. So I had things to talk about, people to meet and, you know, bring up ideas for that need. Uh, So after 10 months, one of the ideas that I, you know, developed there um, led me to be in the first page of Savon Sanomat, one local major newspaper Mm -hmm. in our region. So that was the that was the beginning. So so I was working this for this internship at the same time I was working as a cleaner. Oh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Lack of a sleep. So I just um, wanted to ask you like how did you manage to <laughs> your work life balance probably it was I not you from there. Your eyes. That's why I said lack of a sleep. That was Okay. <laughs> okay. But yeah, th- I learned time management, you mm-hmm. know. Because then I said okay, what are my skills? I have to develop my skills as well. Time management was one. Learning the culture was another. Um, I knew that I'm good at talking. I said, okay, I will focus on what I'm good at to make it even better. You know, mm-hmm. the storytelling, the you know, the, the art of negotiation and, and presenting and so forth. So right after that, then I had, after that 10 months of internship and then being on the newspaper and then like being active on LinkedIn and going to different events, then I had an audience, I had things to talk and I had a good network. Mm-hmm. I think I would love to dive deeper to your internship experience because I've seen from your LinkedIn profile that you are quite active about all of this immigrant life and uh, entrepreneurship um, in Finland. And I would love to ask you, how how was your internship, first of all? What did you do specifically there? And how did that impact on your future career? Mm -hmm. The the, the North South Talent Hub internship. Yeah, and also yeah. another ones that oh, you yeah, mentioned, like El- um, so. So during the time that I was at North South Talent Hub, I wanted to study culture, and I learned that okay, networking is very important in this culture, and most of the jobs are given through networks because mm-hmm. it's based on the uh, uh, trust that they would like to hire people. And um, during North South Talent Hub, I was learning one valuable thing about Finnish working culture, is that uh, the, the managers unlike from the place that I come, the managers do not bring fingers to your work. So they would say what is the task and what is the need, and then you are independently mostly working on everything going on, as long as you bring the result on. Mm -hmm. So you're more free to do whatever it takes to bring that need, you know, met. So um, that was one of the things I learned about Finnish working culture. I, then, then I knew that I should not wait for, for my manager to give me tasks. I must also somehow create my own task and see what works best. And it was amazingly well for me. So, as I said, when my internship was over and I learned these valuable things, time management, bringing ideas, serving for the need and, and this um, um, independence work, mm-hmm. then I was, um, had the pleasure to meet with many different people. One of them was Jan Blomberg, uh, who was at Elu Keskus back then and who gave me the opportunity. Uh, for those who don't know what is Elu Keskus, it's the administrative branch of ministries in each region of Finland. So they would be um, um, in, the, in the administrative level of governmental organizations in each region. So mm-hmm. Pohjois on Elu Keskus was the place that I got the internship from even though my finish was quite lacking, but it was an internship to be a project um, planner or project coordinator. Mm-hmm. So when I got into ELU, it was shockingly brilliant experience because it was a fully Finnish organization and I got to talk with people, I got to learn more, I tried my you know Finnish skills during the work and I would learn much more. And then I made even more networks during the internship there. So then next opportunity arrived that then I was, you know, somehow got introduced with Te at Liva. And then it was Vaino um, who um, saw the opportunity and the talent and saw that, thought that I would be the one who could take this um, production for um, working and living in Finland to produce it and plan it and then even host it. And I was like, okay, this is a very great opportunity. And 
they gave me this opportunity. And I want to say a quote from him that um, he, he said that it's very important that um, once one person's success is not, you know, just just what he himself did it or mm-hmm. she herself did it. The, uh, it depends on the people that are r- around t- right time and, you know, right place and a bit of luck. And I'm, and I'm sure that it was all true for me. I met the right people at the right time and a bit of luck. And of course, on top of that, as he said, is the skills and hard work. So um, in that project also, it was that I was, I was just working like crazy. Mm-hmm. Like I was giving it my all and again for the need. And from the beginning, I was working for the need of immigrants because I was seeing that there are so much of discouragement, so much of stereotypes that are being shared. And with that, it only it only lead fellow internationals, ta- fellow international talents to close the doors of opportunities to themselves before they even arrive. And they would just want to go to the bubble of comfort zone that they would only make friends with those from international side mm-hmm. or those from their own nationality which i try to have i have my very close friends on international sides but i have very close friends in finnish side as well and and that was the key because i was keep pushing to get into the finnish circle to learn the culture um so it was it was quite an quite an amazing experience that i could learn and and hard sometimes but it it it, it worth it and after that internship at Teeto Emisto or Te Elive, I was invited also for Talent Boost Summit to be the keynote speaker yeah. to go on through the journey, which which I was I had uh, I'm very honored to have that just opportunity. Wanted, yeah, just, to, uh, yeah. Ask <laughs> I just wanted to ask that question. Yeah, I'm, I'm going through before. chronologically, you know, like um, um, what has happened. Yeah. Phase by phase. We will come back to the Talent Boost Summit, I mm-hmm. think, later. But okay. you mentioned really important point mm-hmm. about that international students sometimes would like to keep themselves in this safe comfort zone and don't not try to go outside of that. And I think that what happens quite a lot with international students and from my experience, I'm going to say when I have arrived, um, my first and second year, of studies were completely online and I didn't really have an opportunity kind of to meet new people and talk to them. I mean, local people. And I think I became even like more closed during pandemic. And that actually impacted quite a lot on my, first of all, mental health. And then second of all, on my network and career opportunities, because I didn't have even the chance to do that. And when I had a chance, I was like, no, I'd rather sit at home and do my stuff, do my studies and et cetera. And I think that's, I won't say like the mistake, but I think it's better when international people, when they come to another country to, to kind of try to make a first step. Because from my perspective, this is not like that these local people are gonna make a first step to get to know you 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 are in their country mm-hmm. so i think more kind of act, um, activity is expected from my side as an international I, I person i agree with you you know you know how i see it is that okay we are adults and mm-hmm. we come here as students and we see the locals they already have so many childhood friends from primary, secondary, high school, and even outside of a school, then they come to university, then inside of school, they already have so many people around them yeah. that they don't feel the urge or need for new people. And then if if we want to wait for them and we keep, I, I see this nagging that, oh, they don't let us in the circle and, you know, they just go with the fiends with fiends, you know, something like that. It's the same in my class as well, but then there are people from even upper classes or you know, lower classes in, in seniors and juniors that we got into them. But about this thing that you said about that I, I prefer to study and stay, it's same for even sometimes for me. In mm-hmm. the beginning it was. Of course, it was also pandemic time that I came. But, um, um, you know, this is a belief for most of people that I come to study, mm-hmm. then I am, um, um, I just focus on my studies, I get my degree, and then I will go and find a job 
Yeah, exactly. So, so this was my problem. Mm-hmm. Because then I was thinking with myself that, okay, let's say even if you want to get a job now, you don't even have a degree. You don't, I didn't know my, my uh, skills. How can I sell myself? Or how can I present myself? Or what can I do for them? Mm-hmm. And it was all this, that was one of the biggest reasons that I, I seek this kind of internship to find out my own abilities. And instead of I say, for example, oh, I don't have the ability to do that and try to learn that, I said, no. I will first find what I'm good at and I will make them even better. Mm-hmm. So I was good at talking. I tried to make it even better. I was, good at, I was good at presenting. I tried to even make that better. So if I go and talk with people, I say I might not know this, 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 but I will, you know, deliver you this kind of job that no one else can do it like me. Mm-hmm. And then also the confidence, of course, is very important. But um, then I just try to say that if I cannot find any job now as a student, I will never ever be able to find any job, even after graduation. So at this point of my career, I had enough of networks and confidence that I said, okay, for this new production that I'm making, I want to work as a, you know, entrepreneur and as a, as a freelance producer. And I could get this project funded by Ministry of Employment and Economic Affairs of Finland to, to again, try to make this broadcast for other immigrants who want to start a business, to show them the business um, um, owners who are immigrants and successful, to show them the paths and whatever they don't know, because... You know, we are living in, I was reading it somewhere, and it, was, it, it really made me think that we are living in information era. Mm-hmm. I mean, like 40 years ago, the inf- maybe 100 years ago, information was the power. But now, everyone has access to all the information, and that's the problem, because there are so much of information that the, the right information yeah. are lost. Yeah, you don't know which one is right and which one is not. Indeed. And, and you know, that's why I'm trying to do this by this broadcast, again, to help the internationals and, and make this informative broadcast, this time in a, in a documentary style. And I think you're doing a really great job because Thank every you. time I scroll LinkedIn, I see that you are so active. Like, you, you really are passionate about it and you try to do as much as possible to spread awareness among Finnish people and among international people about these challenges and opportunities that exist in in Finland for immigrants. And I think, can can you also tell me, so you're doing this broadcast and how did that mm, go? Like, what was the result? Did, did you have uh, more people from international side that are... The previous uh, broadcast you're asking? Or yeah. Living in yeah. Finland? That, yeah. That's like contact you maybe, connect with you and tell you more about it. How, uh, how did it go? Okay. Yeah, you know, my goal was that, okay, there are so much of um, unfortunate experiences that we hear mm-hmm. on a daily basis. For example, uh, look, at, look at me. Now I'm happy and satisfied because I didn't go with the fact that, okay, first I get my degree and then look for a job. So what would happen to me if I would just stay in that? My, I would get, I would, I would be graduated. I couldn't find a job. Then I would write that, okay, there is no way to find a job. I didn't mm-hmm. try to learn the culture. I didn't try to learn the language. I didn't get to know the system that I'm living in. And then I couldn't find a job. So I was like, look, I got the, uh, bachelor here or the yeah. master's but i cannot find a job so that food spread that hey it's it's impossible even if you get a um, um, degree and blah 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 but but the opposite side you do, the people when, when they hear the story they don't see what the person has done mm-hmm. during the time of his studies and then now share a glimpse of the story so what i tried to do was to show a roadmap to every immigrant from the successful stories, mm-hmm. not just hear their story, but hear about the roadmap that how did they do and what were the key points that they did and what is common among them. Mm-hmm. So then, and, and in the, in the uh, other part, I always try to bring one Finnish official, which in the first one, first episode, it was Laura Lindemann, mm-hmm. who is the senior director of working, uh, working, in, working in Finland. In, in business Finland, 
she was, for example, one of those people, or Selina Varis from Yores, who would come as an as an expert and as a, a governmental official to come and give some, you know, to give the right information, let's say, that I was trying to insist. Mm -hmm. But on the second part of that same episode, I would always had one international person, or in some cases two, uh, like one in insert mode and one in in the in the studio, to interview them and to ask them that how how what what was challenging and how did you overcome them, uh, what was the mindset. Uh, so so if you look at all those people, it's always the fact that they got into the in, they got into knowing people. Mm -hmm. People push them. Things since 20 years ago up until now have changed dramatically and it got so much easier for internationals in comparison with how it was in 10 years ago, 20 years ago. People have mentioned it in the broadcast. And also the mindset that they had. So everyone has challenge. That's obvious. It's all about how you look at the challenge and you ask your question, okay, should I run away or should I find a solution? You know, so that was that was the whole perspective that I was trying to provide um, um, through that uh, production. Yeah, that I wouldn't give any comment on my own. I mm -hmm. would just provide that roadmap for them, and then they would make the conclusion. Okay, I think um, it's kind of similar to what we're also doing in our organization, Talentbus Project, mm -hmm. and. I think the main goal for us is to spread awareness among everyone, not just specific group of people, but for everyone. And I think, I, I, first of all, I'm really glad that you are also doing quite a lot and putting your effort in spreading awareness about these things. I think slowly coming back to what you said before about Talent Boost Summit, I would love to ask like, uh, how did you manage to go there? W were you invited or did you sign up by yourself? And um, also, like, what do you think about Telmo's project in general? Of course. Um, um, about the first part that you say, I, I truly admire what you guys are doing as well. And that's why I was glad to jump into the train from Kovio and come <laughs> here. Yeah. And, you know, um, I'm gladly uh, participate in this podcast. And about the talent boost, I could say... Uh, in the beginning you know another thing about networking is that you will get some mentors mm -hmm. you know some people who support you show you the way connect you with other people and about talent was it was about the same it's it's uh, laura coivisto casal she works from she works in helsinki in elu Keskus. when i was at poyo savon elu Keskus in north savo i got to have to be in meetings with Laura and I had this, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I always told her that I'm very thankful for all the support she had. She has always been a great mentor uh, to me and it was actually recommended, I was recommended by Laura mm -hmm. to the Talent Boost Summit. And then Anna from uh, Vasa has contacted me and then we had some meetings and then through that it was decided that I can go there and share my journey and then talk about the um, a production that we already had that I produced. So I was invited to be the keynote speaker there, which I was, I wouldn't believe that in, in such a, such event, I was given the chance to um, um, share my journey. I, I wouldn't even think that I deserve it. But then after the, um, you know, the event, I got very, very heartwarming messages from people, mm -hmm. which, which even boosted my, you know, motivation to um, work even harder to to be able to be helpful in in this regard and matter. Mm -hmm. So that was that was in a nutshell. I tried to make it as short as possible. That how was the the I was invited and how did I go there? How did I go by car, of course, but like <laughs> how, the, the road that I it took me there. Yeah. yeah, I think this is so amazing, and I'm pretty sure that like the reason probably that now like people uh, get to know you more and like to reach to this summit level is is only because you understood in the beginning that okay that's not how i want my life to be and i want to change it and you started working hard i'm gonna say you're like really working hard and not sleeping <laughs> enough uh in the beginning so it kind of like gives you results now and 
it's still not the end stop, I think, and you're still probably going and you have uh, even higher goals in your life. Mm -hmm. And and I think this is so inspiring. So I want to ask like last question, um, since we don't have like a lot of time left, unfortunately, what is maybe the main practical advice you would give to international talents coming to Finland? Because I think we talked about it and one of them was probably that they should start networking from the beginning that they arrived to Finland and mm. not after after their studies. But what is another advice you would like to give to them? Uh, culture. Mm-hmm. Culture. Culture. It's it's very important because, you know, um, we, we are coming here to this country and the culture defines our attitude. Something which is normal in my culture might be completely wrong in this culture. And I have to learn, not based on stereotypes, but actual cultures that people value in them, people believe in them, and then respect them Mm -hmm. by all means. Because, you know, um, based on your own culture when you come here, you have a set of expectations. True. And then those ex- expectations are like images. And as, as soon as, like uh, the way you make friends, the way in Iran you go, you know, from, you, w- you want to commute by bus and maybe in the bus, is, in, the, in the bus, you know, I meet and sit next to a person and I can be friends with that person after mm-hmm. we reach the destination because we talk. But maybe it doesn't work here in some regions. So what I want to say is that culture is very important and the attitude toward how you respect that culture. I was saying this expectation is like an image. And as soon as the image is broken, you will go to the uh, you know state of culture shock. You will go to the state of doubting your, your own self and your decision. And then you will close the doors of opportunities to yourself. Mm-hmm. But if you know the culture, if you know the norm, if you know that, um, um, you know, like it, how people because i read it in one article sorry i'm taking it making it a little bit longer but i will try to make it short i read it in one article that they were asking at research that they were asking the immigrants in finland and they said they make us feel unwelcomed and i was like that's how you felt because um because finnish you know like mostly culture is like not that sociable in the first place mm-hmm. So it's completely normal for a Finn and a Finn when they encounter, they don't have much of, you know, like in my own culture or in like some um, um, Southern European culture that they are so warm and go and like, you know, you might, you make friends so fast. That's how normal it is. That, that, that is normal defines to most of them, let's say. And then with your expectation, you feel that you are being, you know, um, um, unwelcomed yeah. by the attitude. But if you know the culture, you know that that's not the case. Yeah, and I think this is so confusing when someone tells about his experience and he kind of projects that on your image mm-hmm. and then you come and you expect what this person said. Mm-hmm. And I think this is like one of the mistakes probably people do that they tell to this person, yeah, it works like this, but it's it works like this probably for you individually like yeah. that other person didn't experience that exactly can i just add this yeah to what you said you know um you, you realize i named finnish names here laura koivisto jan blumbeck vaino and even jarko suraka my first manager and even the friends that i have that i want to name everyone here i want to say in my own country there would be people who would hate me Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, maybe different neighborhood, maybe different lifestyle or, or different even region and culture, they might hate me. And then even, I'm sure you had the same experience that you were in a classroom in your own country. There were some people that automatically you didn't like to interact with. Would you focus on the fact that those people didn't like you? Or would you focus on your own friends? Uh, all I want to reach out to this is that you might encounter to people who might not appreciate you or do not like you. Why do you focus on them? Focus on those who care about you, are giving you opportunities, and you know, just just shift your focus to those who appreciate you. And and that's what I'm trying to do, and it has worked brilliantly for me. And that's another advice that I can say, despite the culture. Okay, I think that was really, really, for me at least, it was really inspiring and. 
so nice conversation to discuss with and i think you're such a great talker well, I, <laughs> yeah. i talk too much but <laughs> yeah but it's a good thing that uh, i was just like listening yeah. everything you said and i was like also processing and um there were some parts that i was like yeah i can relate to that and and etc and i think that our viewers also and listeners got to know more about working culture and about you and i think this is again <laughs> great i'm like repeating myself yeah and thank you first of all i said it before but again thank you that you decided to join us today and it was really a really nice experience to have a podcast with you and guys as probably i say it a lot of times don't forget to follow our talent boost social media and subscribe to our newsletters and read them there are a lot of important information and also connect to Roham on LinkedIn because he shares a lot of interesting posts and projects about his job and yeah and I think like my last words would be from today's topic that try to focus on positivity on good things on your strength that you can improve rather than the weakness that you try to kind of like not show to everyone try to improve yourself what is good with you and not that and and not that something is not working for you yeah that that's my probably last words and see you soon again bye